Hey everyone, I am sitting down to film a quick little like get ready with me, but specifically I want to talk about eyeshadow rules that I think we should be breaking or that I break all the time and that I've learned um, don't really work for me or my eye shape. Um, I have already done my base, I did my morning skincare, I used my Dior Backstage Foundation, which I love, my Armani Power Fabric Concealer, which is my favorite, and then the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer for pigmentation. Um, this is the shade Macadamia. I think it's a little warm for me, I think I need to go up to Ginger, which is a little bit more neutral. It's the next shade, slightly deeper. So let's talk about eyeshadow. I have worn eyeshadow since I was a teenager. I've always loved it, but I learned my eyeshadow rules and how-tos um, from TV, from makeup books, from early days of YouTube, and um, I even took a makeup class on like stage makeup once because I grew up doing theater and doing different kinds of performance, performing, and they all cater to what I realize now is a Eurocentric beauty ideal, which is no surprise, but it's, it's, I say ideal because it's a really kind of aspirational idea about what an eye should look like, which is that there is a really visible mobile lid and then you have a high crease and then you have like a distinct brow bone. And the idea is that, you know, when, when you look at an eye straight on, it, it has all of those qualities, which obviously we know is not true. People have hooded eyes, people have monolids. I'm Korean American. I, I have what they call a double eyelid, so this crease right here, but it's very small. Some days it goes away completely. Some days it's actually pretty higher up, and most days it's kind of like this. And when I look straight on, you might see a little bit of a fold, but you don't see a lot of that mobile lid. And so a lot of the tricks that I've adapted around eyeshadow placement um, should work for hooded eyes and monolids and eyes that really don't fit, um, yeah, that beauty ideal, that Western Eurocentric beauty ideal of what an eye should look like. So I have a few different palettes that I'm going to use. Um, this is not product specific, but um, let's just get started and I'll show you what I think of when I do my eyeshadow. So the first rule that I think we should break is that a matte shadow, the first step in an eyeshadow look is that a matte shadow should go in your crease. And I want to break that rule because first of all, not everyone has a crease that looks like a very defined area of your eye right above your mobile lid, especially if you have a mono lid or a hooded eye. This step is really about contouring your eye shape to make it maybe look bigger or to make it look lifted. It um, is about bringing definition to your eye so it doesn't look quite so um, flat. You're bringing dimension and shadow um, to sort of make the eye, trick the eye into thinking, looking at an eye <laughs> and thinking it's bigger. So I pulled out my Viseart um, what is this even called? The, the classic Viseart palette because I want to play around with these mattes. Um, I like to dip between, actually, I'm gonna go into this Viseart palette. This is the neutral mattes? No, warm mattes? I don't know. It's this one <laughs> with the warm neutrals and then the pink and blue. So I really like dipping into this peach shadow, and then let's go into this shadow in the corner. And this is what I think of when I think of defining my eye. So I start at the outer corner here, and I lay down a color where I want the most pigmentation, which I like to create a slightly lifted and eye-opening look. And then I blend above the crease. And this is going to be my biggest trick for honestly most of the looks that I do is that you need to place the color and place the shadow above the crease so that the when the eye is relaxed, you're looking straight ahead, you can actually see it. Because if I were to place it in my actual quote unquote crease or my eye fold, it would disappear when I looked straight ahead. If I just put it 
on the bottom part of my eye, when I look up, it's gone. And people with hooded, really hooded eyes will know what I mean. So I just start blending out. I start with a light kind of dusting. I'm not doing a super smoky eye or anything, but if you were, you would build up shadow starting right here. So another way to think about this is instead of um, putting eyeshadow in your crease, I actually like to feel the orbital bone of where your eye is. And this is different for everyone, but it's a really good rule because it is um, structural. And so this is a good rule because it's the same across the board for everyone, which is that when you find your orbital bone, you want to place the eyeshadow right there because that is what kind of contours your eye structurally. So when you put color where the orbital bone is, you get a little bit more dimension and definition. And this is true with a lot of different eye shapes and including mature eyes. So if I wanted to go in then with a deeper shadow, um, let's just go one step up. I'm going to go into, actually let's go into this neutral like mid-tone brown. You follow the same rule, place it above your eye, crease by your orbital bone, and sort of blend that inward, blend it outward with a darker shade. You might want to keep it slightly more concentrated on the outer corner to give you that like lifted look. This is where you can start to play with shape, and this is really about like contouring your eye. So the next rule that I think we should break and that I break all the time is the idea that we should keep shimmer on the lid and that shimmer should not go in the crease. I mean, we've basically debunked the whole like crease rule anyway. So at this point, you should feel free to place eyeshadow wherever you like it. And I mean, that's true with any makeup. You should wear it how you like it because it's meant to make you feel good. So I'm gonna demo this using the Pat McGrath Ritualistic Rose Quad right now. I've just been in the mood to use this and the shimmers are, they're her special shades, they're micro glitters, so they're really visible and I think they will be um, helpful to sort of demo this look. And it's also 25% off on her website right now, so I'll link that below. But um, I'm gonna go in with this, let's see, which shade should I do? With this sort of plummy pink, it's beautiful. Again, these are her like special micro glitter pressed pigment shades, and this is the Sonia G soft shader. So again, with the Eurocentric beauty ideal, the idea is that the shimmer should highlight your mobile lid and should not go into the crease that is meant to contour your eye. But I take shimmers above my lid all the time, above that fold, because otherwise you wouldn't see them. <laughs> and so I really just am super generous with application. You can see my fold is there, and I'm gonna go above the fold all over my lid area and above or over where I like laid down the contour shades. And I'm pretty generous with the application. I just blend it all over. Basically, I stop like under my brow, my brow bone. But this way you can actually see it when I open my eye and look straight ahead. So related to the last rule about no shimmers in the crease, I also break the rule of um, that, you know, the shade that defines your outer corner should be a matte shade. I actually think you can use any deep shade of any texture to define the outer corner. I'm gonna go into this like chocolatey shade in, in this quad. And I'm taking a smaller brush because I wanna keep the definition sort of a little more focused. I'm gonna go right above my fold and right under my orbital bone. So there's like a little socket right here and you can feel where it hits the orbital bone. And I'm just going to tap and blend that out to define my eye shape. 
just like that. And then to highlight the eye, I'm gonna go into this golden shade. And I've noticed a lot of Eurocentric eye tutorials keep the um, inner corner pop really focused on the sort of like close to the nose bridge. And I actually find that for me, the inner corner highlight looks best when it's sort of blended onto my lid area and into the rest of the shadow. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to place it on the inner corner. So traditionally, a lot of people just leave their inner corner highlight like that, maybe a little more blended, but I'm actually going to blend it all the way and carry it into that purple shade that I put down in the middle of the lid. And I find this actually opens up my eye so much more. It makes my look my eye look a lot bigger. And it's just a lot more flattering. So this look turned out a little bit more dramatic than I had planned, but that's okay. I, I, I mean, I love the way it looks. I'm going to go into that same Esam brush. I've wiped off a lot of the product on it. I'm going to go into that peachy shade one more time. <clears throat> and then this mid-tone peach shade and I like to define the outer corner um, on the lower lash line but I don't bring it all the way in and I find that that actually helps um, open up my eye but when I bring it all the way in it closes off my eye so I'm gonna keep a really light lower lash line today just just a little something to contour and just connect it to the outer corner right here it's a really subtle trick but I feel like it does a bit of something. It um, makes the eye look a little bit more cohesive. It's me again. I realized I forgot to film the last step of this makeup look, which was applying the Pat McGrath lip gloss in the shade Flesh Astral. This is a really nice, very neutral, sort of beigey pink, and it has a bit of gold pearl running through it, but it doesn't look like shimmery on the lips. So it's a really nice nude for my skin tone. But I wanted to say, I have been thinking about my YouTube channel, which I've neglected for several months, and I realized I neglect it because I've been treating each video like a production, and I think I want to approach my content a little bit more casually the way I do on Instagram. And I want to maybe do more vlogs or just more casual stuff that doesn't involve, I mean, it might involve me sitting down and, you know, doing a whole concept, talking to camera, but that also includes some more casual stuff of my day-to-day -day life. So you might see more stuff like that from me. I mean, hopefully you will, either later in this video or maybe in the next one. I haven't decided yet, but either way, I'll see you next time and maybe you'll see some different kinds of content from me.